everyone! Today we are going to talk about rendering. But before we will start, remember to subscribe our channel with the red button down there and turn on the notifications with the small ring. And remember about thumbs up! In the next episode. As I mentioned a few seconds ago, today I will be talking about rendering. I will be talking about client-side rendering, server-side rendering and pre-rendering. I'm going to explain you how it works, what's the difference and which one you should use in any moment and with any kind of the application. Let's start! Okay, so let's start from client-side rendering. At first, I'd like to explain you how it works and what it means that application is rendered on a client side. Right now you can see the graphic on the screen with six different steps. Let me go through these steps one by one and explain you what's going on on client side rendering. So client side rendering is a way of rendering web applications on the browser side. This approach becomes commonly used since modern front-end framework popularized this solution. Before that, applications used server-side rendering, but what does this mean? I'll tell you in a second. Let's go back to client-side rendering. So, since most of the applications are now created with frameworks like React or Angular or Vue, they are using client-side rendering. And what it means? It means that when user is requesting a website, so user is going to the browser, putting the address, and this way he is requesting the website, then server sends the HTML file with JavaScript links back to the browser. Browser then downloads the HTML and it also downloads CSS and JavaScript. It might take a second, after that, browser executes framework or, or library, depending what application is using. And then browser loads the website and user can interact with the website and use it like fully. Until all the JavaScript is downloaded, users can see that an empty page or loading screen depends what's developed on the application. And then when JavaScript is downloaded, it needs a second to compile everything. And next, the content can be shown to the user, user can interact, click buttons, get data, etc. The initial load in the case of client-side rendering is slightly slower, but after that, each next loading is pretty fast. Also, there's no need to re-render the whole UI in modern applications, because just a single element change, so that's also faster. So, let's take a look at the of client-side rendering. First of all, fast rendering after initial loading. Next, it's good for web apps with lots of logic and the big part which needs authorization. And besides that, a lot of JavaScript frameworks and libraries are now supporting CSR, so it's easier to implement it. About the cons, we can talk about low CO. It's a little bit difficult to get a good SEO in client-side rendering and also initial loading can take a second so it can slow down the application at the first loading. Now let's go through the cases where using client-side rendering can be a good idea. So if your application has a lot of dynamic data then it's pretty good idea to use uh, client-side rendering. If your application has a very complex UI, then it's also a good idea. If the application is focused on a bigger number of users, that's also the solution. Besides that, if application needs authorization to be accessed, it's also great to use client-side rendering. 
and also if you don't have to care a lot about cell then it's you can use client-side rendering without any issue okay when you understand client-side rendering let's go to another popular complex which is called server-side rendering Now on the screen you can see a different graphic showing you six steps of server-side rendering. What is server-side rendering? It's another way of rendering web pages, but this one renders content in the server, not in the browser. It sends a ready files to the browser, so it only needs to show it to the user. Let's take a look at these points from the graphics. So, as previously, a user requested the website, they are typing like an address, press enter and then server comes in and server creates ready HTML files. It sends it to the browser and the browser renders HTML, but it's not interactive yet. Then browser downloads JavaScript and it executes the JavaScript and then user can interact with the page. So in this case, you can realize that user can see the whole page faster but he can't interact with it pretty fast. And this whole process is happening fully on the server and it's repeated every time when user triggers a new action. So for example, if user wants to get any data or clicks the button, then server is re-rendering the page and sends another HTML file with new UI. To use server-side rendering with uh, this newest front-end frameworks, which doesn't support it, we can use things like Angular Universal for Angular server-side rendering. We can set up React.js in a little bit different way, or we can use Next.js, which is like a framework for server-side rendering with React. And for Vue, we can use Nuxt.js. So there is always an option if you need any like this. Let's now take a look at the pros and cons of server-side rendering. So, the big advantage of server-side rendering is that search engine bots can crawl for a better SEO. It, it can improve SEO a lot. And another big pros of server-side rendering is initial loading is faster. About the cons. So, there are lots of server requests. Full page needs to be reloaded and it also takes some time. And the rendering of the application can be slower when the website needs some interactivity. Let's now take a look at the types of applications that can be used with server-side rendering easily. So, for sure, if your application is more a static page, like landing page or something like that, then using server-side rendering can make it fast and make it with better cell and it's for sure a great solution. Next, when your application UI is complex, but with small amount of interactivity. So again, I think a good idea is to make any landing page or static website with server-side rendering. And besides that, if the amount of user is not large, it's also a great idea. And right now we have the last solution that can be used with our applications and it's kind of a deal between, it's called pre-rendering. So, pre-rendering is a trade-off between server-side and client-side rendering. When the user enters the browser address, the server sends back the static HTML with the JavaScript, which is loading in the background. The user can see the static website, but there's no interactivity until JavaScript is fully downloaded. Then, JavaScript gets the necessary data to the particular view and redirects the user to the right file if it's not visible. Here uh, on the screen you can see the graphic with different six steps which are displaying how pre-rendering works. And it's a great idea for SEO, especially if you have a big application which needs authorization, but at first you want to show some landing page, then pre-rendering can be a great option for you. Well, let's go and take a look at pros and cons of pre-rendering. From the pros, better user experience for the first loading because user can see some elements of an HTML, they just can't interact. Uh, next thing is better sell, it's like 
user doesn't have to wait for the first loading as with server-side rendering, but the cell is better than in client-side rendering. And less request than with server-side rendering, so we don't kill our server with HTTP requests for the HTML files after each interaction. And let's talk about the cons. So we need to wait for interactivity until JavaScript is loaded. It takes some time, so it can so it can require us developers to provide some other UI to let users know that something is loading and that interactivity is not working yet. And the next cons of the pre-rendering is that exactly we need to provide some user-friendly design for the initial loading. When to use pre-rendering? If your application has an UI that needs to have a good cell, that's a good solution. If part of your application is available for user without an authentication, that's also a good solution. If you don't want to use server-side rendering, but you need to improve loading time and cell, that's the way you should use. And also, if your application has more static content on the first page load, pre-rendering can be a great solution. Congratulations! Now you understand what is server-side rendering, what is client-side rendering, and what is pre-rendering. I hope it's clear, and now you know what are cons and pros of each solution. I hope you'll find this video useful before we will create your next application. If you like it, remember about thumbs up, if you don't subscribe our channel yet, remember to do it with the red button and leave us a comment. I hope you will have a great day. Bye!